WWDC is now over and we got everything that we expected aside from the main things, which were the MacBook Pros. And that is actually very surprising because all the major leakers and all the leaks and reports were actually pointing towards this. And I believe that too, I was very certain that we would get MacBooks, so we'll actually have a separate video as to what might have happened and when we should actually expect to see these new MacBook Pros. But this video is all about iOS 15, covering not 5, not 10, not 20, not even 30, but 30 plus major new features. So get us next ready and enjoy. So at number one, all the devices that supported iOS 14 also support iOS 15, which is some great news. This means that even the iPhone 6s from 2015, a six-year-old device, still supports iOS 15. And iOS 15 also has an advanced anti-theft mode now, uh, which means that even when your iPhone is turned off or even erased, you would still be able to locate it using the Find My Network. Which means that as long as you have an eSIM, the thief would not be able to remove the SIM and therefore you would always be able to locate your phone as long as of course it has some battery left. And did you guys know that Apple now has separation alerts in the Find My app? So you can actually select the device uh, to show this on and it can be an AirTag or even your MacBook. And this means that if you leave to work and you forget your MacBook, you will actually get an alert on your iPhone that you've left your MacBook behind. <laughs> Pretty cool. Another secret feature, so to say, is a password authenticator. So we have this in the settings and it works basically the same as Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator or different authentication apps. The downside is that it only works on iOS but then at the same time, authenticators do not have cross-platform functionality anyways. So I might actually switch to this from Microsoft Authenticator, which is the one that I'm currently using. And did you guys know that we also get free iCloud storage now? So yes, the limit, the free tier is still at five gigabytes, which is disappointing. Like this, is, this has been the same since it launched like 10 years ago. But the good news is that let's say you have an old iPhone with five gigabytes of iCloud storage. So the free plan, and then you get a new iPhone and you wanna make an iCloud backup of your old one to restore your data onto the new phone. Well, you can now back up your entire old iPhone for three weeks without it taking your iCloud storage. This is so that you can restore your data to your new iPhone without having to temporarily pay for more iCloud storage. And something really cool is that you can now choose in the settings to update to iOS 15 or stay on iOS 14 with security updates. Now, this is a bit of a interesting upgrade. So maybe iOS 15 is very resource heavy on older devices and Apple lets us do this because of that. So stay tuned for an update. Uh, but it's still a very good option to, you know, give us choices. And speaking of choices, you now have the choice to prioritize 5G over Wi-Fi. Now, this only works on the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, of course, because those are the only ones that have 5G. Um, and they will automatically switch to 5G when they detect that your Wi-Fi connection is bad. And we also get some printing improvements with a brand new UI and an overall cleaner look. This is one of the only improvements to the printing UI that iOS has ever received. Now, here's an Easter egg. When you set up your iPhone for the first time or even restore from a backup, you would actually get this brand new hello screen, which matches the one on the brand new iMacs. And we also get deeper Memoji customization to the point where you can even change the eye color <laughs> uh, to just one of your eyes and uh, many more small changes to Memoji just like this. Oh, and remember that magnify tool? Uh, to select text, which got removed in iOS 13. Well, now it's back with a fresh new design, which I quite like. Oh, and the Apple TV remote got a new design as well with a cleaner UI with more defined buttons. Oh, and did you guys know that Apple actually launched their own VPN? Well, it's not actually called Apple VPN, but it is part of iCloud Plus, uh, which you automatically get when you're paying for iCloud. So this is technically a VPN, it works automatically in the background, so you don't really have to do anything. Your IP address and location will both be hidden when using Safari, which means that you'll be untrackable, at least according to Apple, which is great. Not only that, but we also get an email alias generator, which means that we never really have to show our emails anymore because we can have different aliases for different use cases and then forward the emails from those aliases to our actual email addresses. 
so for example, you can have an alias for subscriptions, uh, another one for, I don't know, some other things, and then easily disable them when you want to. Oh, and iOS now has Android support. <laughs> well, it's only for FaceTime, and it only works in the browser which feels super lazy, like Apple could have easily made a dedicated FaceTime app for Android, but obviously um, they haven't done that. Now, the good news is that we can now have FaceTime links, which means that you can send this to pretty much anyone, and this is great for meetings, and again, anyone can join, even on Android and even on Windows. And just like precision finding on the AirTags, we now have precision Bluetooth finding. Now, at the moment, this only works on the AirPods, the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max, but the UI looks very similar to precision finding with the AirTags, the only difference is that, again, it works via Bluetooth instead of that U1 chip. Speaking of AirPods, we now get conversation boosts, so essentially beam forming for AirPods when you're using them in hearing aid mode. We also get fall wrist detection in the health app, and it will also tell you what exercises you can do to minimize the chance of you falling. And speaking of the health app, you also have health sharing now. So you can select family members and share some or even all of your health data with them. And this is a bit of a creepy one to think about, but you can now select family members to share your data with in case you die. And then in the settings, it will now show you exactly how many minutes each app has used your microphone, your camera, and so on. And you can quickly disable access from there. Siri is also much smarter now as it works on the actual device, which means that it will be noticeably faster at giving you a response. On top of that, Siri is finally contextually aware, uh, which means that if you ask her if a specific restaurant is open, you can continue asking her how long will it take me to get there and so on. And we also have a system-wide translate now, which means that you can just highlight text to translate, which is pretty cool. This is something that was missing on iOS, and unfortunately, only a few languages are supported at the moment. Okay, now most of you watching this video probably have at least one Apple product. So if you're looking for some truly premium Apple accessories, check out Banwerk, our sponsor for this video. Banwerk originally started with high-end Apple Watch bands handmade entirely out of premium leather. They even had some collections where they used the interior leather of supercars to make their bands. Well, they still have those, but now they have iPhone cases and even AirTag accessories too. The iPhone case that we have here is Banwerk's Magakaj line, which is made out of Italian Napa leather by hand. Now, aside from the quality, what is really unique about this case is that it comes in multiple colors and you can customize it too by adding your initials or even a logo when you order it. Also handmade from the same Napa letter is Banwerk's new AirTag keyring accessory, which is the most premium AirTag keyring that I've ever seen. It even comes with these tools to install your AirTag in. Check out Banwerk's line of Apple accessories by using the link below. Now, one of the biggest changes that we got in iOS is in terms of notifications. So we didn't really get a redesigned control center like we've actually seen rumored, but we did get some tweaked notifications. Mark Gurman was super correct about this one. So one of the changes is that we get smaller notification bubbles for chats and social media, and then larger ones for app notifications, which means that it's much easier for you to tell which notification comes from each app. And then we also get a notification summary, which is delivered on a set schedule. Now, this is also AI driven, uh, which means that the order will be based on the importance of each notification. Another massive change is focus mode. This is essentially do not disturb mode, but on steroids. Um, and long story short, do not disturb mode can now disable apps and even tweak the home screen. And you can have different presets for driving, fitness, gaming, reading, and limit apps and even which people can message you uh, when you have that setting enabled. And it's also location-based, so you can have it so that when you get to the gym, the gym focus would get enabled. And when you're at work, you would only see messages from your coworkers on Slack, uh, which is amazing for me. Now, this was leaked by Mark Gurman before, and on top of that, iMessage will display when one user has focus enabled. And this is amazing for me because I'm constantly bombarded by notifications. You can even disable home pages that contain distracting apps and have specific home screens for work and home. Love this. And our new feature is uh, a specific mic and camera control when you're FaceTiming. Now, you will only see these in the control center, which I don't think is intuitive at all. These should be in uh, FaceTime options. 
Um, but anyways, you can now have two audio modes for the microphone, so voice isolation and white spectrum. And then you also have real-time portrait mode for the camera. Oh, and spatial audio is available in FaceTime now, which means that if one person sits closer to, I don't know, the left-hand side of their device, you would actually hear that audio in your left side speaker, which is pretty cool. And one of the biggest changes in iOS 15 is called SharePlay. So you can now watch a movie or listen to music together with someone else on FaceTime and everything will be in real time sync. And it will also work on some of the other apps like Netflix, Disney Plus and more. And this is so awesome because I did actually watch movies in the past with friends online but we were never truly in sync. We had to pause the movie and just read out the time codes and stuff like that. So this is awesome. The downside is that you both need to have an iOS device for this to work, plus an Apple TV if you want to watch it on the big screen. Something else that's cool is that you can now share your screen in FaceTime, which is perfect for helping your grandparents with their tech problems. And we also get Google Lens built into iOS. Well, it's actually a clone of that. Um, and it's built into the camera and the entire operating system. Long story short, it can read text from the camera app or even from your photos. And then you can copy that text into messages or anything else, so it's super useful. It also works for detecting pets too, plants, and more. Then Maps got a massive update where everything looks like a game now. It's, it's just superb. Uh, it's actually handmade, and the downside of this is that it only works in very few locations at the moment, and even in the cities in which it does work, it only works in a few areas. But hopefully this gets improved by the time iOS 15 releases, but at least from this teaser, it looks like, well, the best looking maps app ever. Oh, and you can even zoom out to see the Earth. <laughs> and you also get an AR mode for maps now. Aside from this, the wallet got some major updates as well, as it can now store keys, even your office badge, hotel keys, as well as your ID card. Now, this is super big. Unfortunately, ID cards only work in the US at the moment and only in a few select states. But this is definitely the future, you know, just having one device, a phone, that will basically unlock everything for you and it will have all the info you need just there. Unfortunately, it will take some time for this to be implemented, I would say at least 10 years, because you know all hotels will need to replace locks, at home you will need to replace your lock with a smart lock and all that kind of stuff, so it will take a long time for this to be adopted fully. Now, remember how Apple bought Dark Sky, the app, in 2020? Well, we finally get to see that in the Native Maps app. So we get a live prediction on when it is going to rain, and this actually has the same UI as in Dark Sky. We also get weather maps as well as over 1000 variation of backgrounds which more accurately show the weather outside now. This is a major update and this new weather app on iOS 15 looks like the most feature packed weather app on iOS so far. And Safari got some pretty major visual changes as well. We have a super clean minimalistic look. The navigation bar has been redesigned as well, so now it's actually at the bottom. And we also get tab groups to organize your tabs in. Super helpful. And finally, the Photos app also got some major updates with automatic memories, with animations and slideshows. And yes, this is very, very similar to Google Photos and the automatic creations. And we also get automatic music as well, which kind of reminds me of you know, Samsung's automatic ones and, you know, even Google's. Um, you can add filters to change the color and that will also change the music. It is pretty cool, but I don't really see myself using this that often. But there we go, this was everything in terms of iOS. Definitely subscribe as we will have individual videos about all the other products as well, including macOS and iPadOS, as well as my thoughts on what happened with the MacBook Pros. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.